run spawn. <laughs> we all enjoy playing Valorant because of the flawless precision of the gun. The truth is, in order to create a game with precise gunplay, we must make these weapons as finicky as possible. Do you want to take a step while shooting? Maybe you spend too much time shooting. Even if you breathe incorrectly, your shots are going to miss. I spent some time trying to understand how inaccuracy and recoil patterns are programmed. In this video, I'll try to recreate the Vandal spray pattern and discuss some of the programming logic behind it. The code will be done in Unity, as I'm currently not too familiar with Unreal, which is what Valorant is built with. But most of what I'm going over is general concepts, so it should be applicable to whatever game engine you want. Let's start in game and see how the Vandal behaves when it's used and record what we're going to need to implement. Maybe you don't notice it while you're playing, but whenever you fire, the camera raises to a certain level, which appears to vary between guns. Aside from the camera kicking up, each gun appears to follow a rough spray pattern until it becomes pseudo-random at the apex. I'm confident that the gun tries to follow a base spray pattern, but each bullet has its own inaccuracy, resulting in a random resulting spray pattern every time. Before we go into any code, let's take a look at how first-person shooters work in the first place. Moving your mouse around in Valorant allows you to look around, but you're actually just rotating your camera behind the scenes. While your WASD movements moves a character object, the camera is merely a bystander. You also might notice that when you shoot in Valorant, the bullet always lands in the center of your screen even if your gun is obscured by a wall. And this is because everything on your screen doesn't actually exist in the game world. Think of it as a nice overlay. We can understand how shots are handled with this knowledge. Simply draw a line from your camera start point to the location where you're pointing. In most 3D software, all you need to do is cast a ray to see if a line intersects with anything. This usually necessitates a starting point in a direction. In this case, we start at our camera and shoot the ray forward. When the ray hits a point, we can collect the data and display the visuals. No more to oppose us. Now that we understand how the shots are produced, we still have to deal with the camera jumping up, the first shot actually, as well as the spray pattern. All of these may appear to be separate entities, but they all operate under the same logic. Let's take a look at the Vandal's first shot accuracy. The game says it's around 0.25 degrees, and I'm assuming that this means that the bullet will land in a 0.25 degree area from the center. So knowing that casting rays is how the bullet trajectory is calculated, all we need to do is change the direction of the ray, and we can get our first shot accuracy from that. Most objects in 3D environments must be rotated along the X, Y, and Z axis. And when exploring the world of 3D rotations, we must briefly enter the world of quaternions, where I don't truly understand what's going on here, so we're going to jump straight to Euler angles. With Unity, we can easily represent 3D rotations with Euler angles. Returning to our diagram, all we need to do is ensure that the direction of our ray is with the range of 0.25 degrees. To do this, we can generate a random value between positive and negative 0.25 degrees for both the x and z axis. Now, whenever a shot is fired, it should land between the range we've given it. If we expand the accuracy to let's say 5 degrees, which is the ops unscoped accuracy, you can see how the potential shots fan out. And the farther we are, the larger the range becomes. Next, consider the camera kick. As you may recall, the camera is simply an object attached to the character model that renders the picture to your screen. You can freely rotate it around its axis because it's an object, and this is how we'll recreate the screen kick whenever you fire around. When we fire, we can simply send a recoil amount to the camera component and rotate it by a certain angle. However, after we rotate it, we must slowly return it back to the center, which is what this code does here. Finally, consider the Vandal spray pattern. It resembles the 7 until it transfers into a random spray from one side to another. This is relatively easy to accomplish because we already know what we need to do. We simply need to change the ray's direction to the location we want to target. So in order to create the 7, we need to create a list of coordinates that can generate it. In our example, we can do something like this, where 0, 0 is the center of the ray, and the other points form the rest of the 7 pattern. Whenever a shot is fired faster than the recovery rate, we can go to the next value in the list, then make sure our ray is cast in that direction. Then, once we've exhausted all the indices in our list, the spray pattern will randomly shoot left and right. However, I won't be covering that portion in this video, but the code will most likely resemble what we've already done. Now, if we add all the components together, we get this. A moderately successful recreation of the Vandal spray pattern, and I think that's pretty neat. If you want to play around with my code or fix it up, as always, the repository is in the description. And keep in mind, next time you get running headshot, or maybe one tapped by a vandal, Last unlucky, I guess. Standing. Flawless. Damn. Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, make sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe.